and her craft. So thank you, Susan, for oh, coming. Well, thank all of you. I feel like I'm dreaming because when you do work in your studio, you can't imagine that this many people will be seeing it. So this piece is called Epiphany of Paradox. And a religious person that I knew said, you can't have an epiphany of paradox. And I said, I do every day. <laughs> that until you can take the opposites and find your own center, which is always moving, you haven't used your brain and your heart. And the painting began here. This was the first panel. So none of this was imagined at this point. And, and it was a still life, but because there are other things to my life, the Pale Bops Comet happened at that point, the Ebola virus happened at that point, um, my, the New York Times, the coffee, and I balanced this canvas on my easel with this one. So this went to the Renaissance and and the microscope, they believed that the eye had a candle in it, the different religions, the <coughs> apple with the bite in it, the, the Masa uh, architecture, he's standing on a globe, which I thought was interesting, because this was 20 years ago that I did this, and I'm still alive. <laughs> um, and, but from the calm, it went to a tsunami tidal wave. And then that's when the internet first came about. And I was artist in residence in a technology center because I used technology to reproduce my work, not to do it. And so whoever was there, and there were people from all over the world, would come into my studio while I was working and make an opine about things, so I would talk with them. And so this is the, the, the center of the storm and the beginning of the computer internet, and, the, and yet the butterfly will fly 35,000, 3,500 miles or something like that. But, but ancient Greece was turned upside down, and this is one of my favorite phrases that we all have heard about, everything in moderation, nothing in excess. Well, a wonderful young woman who worked at a Greek diner told me what the actual phrase was, and it's pan metron ariston, which translates as every measure excellence. And you don't have to know anything else. And by the way, in terms of things changing, uh, I once wrote that, that I'm not manic depressive, life is. <laughs> that life just constantly throws you a curveball and you go, oh. <laughs> Here. and you just keep going and that's how this painting kept going so I had this classroom where I could buy canvas suits and see where it would go and the gentleman who had the office next to me was a chess player now I love chess but I'm certainly not a chess player and I said I want an unwinnable game because that's called war so the idea that war is not winnable, it never was. Um, I mean, it goes all the way back to Lao Tzu and Sun Tzu. I mean, there's just, we wouldn't be here if war were winnable. One side wins, someone else writes about it, and, and it's where we are today, so nothing changes. But the tsunami, oh, and this was, uh, the heart is in the middle, of the, in between the heart and the head. And that was from somebody who was from China. And this was uh, the words for peace in both Hebrew and Arabic, and the DNA molecule. Uh, and there's bits of still lights throughout the whole thing. But if you focus too much on nature, and that's all you're interested in, the little goose is wandering out, and this became the Mekong Delta at war. That if you're not, focused on what's going on outside of yourself, you're going to be surprised badly. So, but here's war and the, the gas mask and the, the Hiroshima, but above war, we use all of this for science. And so here's the, the earth and going up 
And all of this is being blown out of this instrument or siphoned back into this instrument. And there's music, the Greek columns again, uh, the Declaration of Independence. Visitarte is from Tosca, the opera, and means I live for art. Mm -hmm. And Bach and Mozart and the piano keys and all of that coming into a point could be a colored pencil, but then it becomes abstraction, which was the, the age that I was in, that, that the idea was you went to a museum and you just walked through the way you were in a food market um, quickly. But so there's a whole language in here, but each section had to relate to the other sections. So you can sort of see if you were to break it down the way this cone, these are almost like planets coming out of there. Um, if this is war, then this is blood that's coming also as a sunset. So everything has its <coughs> oppositions. Uh, here's a, an angel weeping over a fallen pawn. Um, this DNA in C60 is my own theory of how life began. <laughs> and a physicist told me I might be right, but I won't begrudge you all with it. Um, but throughout, there's a, a bagel, a flower, a still life. So how to make life fit in with you and not to pre-plan it. How's that? <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? You answered them all. <laughs> I did? Well, I didn't prepare this speech because this came about because somebody asked me questions. And since this is my work, and I've lived it, and I, it would go back into a closet in two bags <laughs> after this show. So you you will all go in with it, and I thank you all. So That's please, beautiful. anything you want to ask Can you me. tell us about the two blue Oh, the, the, uh, this is the pyramid. Lines? This, is, this is ancient Egypt. So you've got the pyramid going way up. And, and the concept I had of the, of the computer being ones and zeros is like the base of a pyramid. And uh, instead of it being the pharaoh on top, it should have been knowledge. <laughs> Maybe still will. <laughs> Do, um, can you just tell us a little bit about your background as an artist, where you went to uh, school? Yes, I, I did not take art in high school because I was smart. <laughs> <laughs> so they put me in, in honors programs. And then I went off to college as a psychology major. And midway through, I missed art and took a summer class at Parsons School of Design and became a professional illustrator. And which was everything I've done, I was told was impossible. So never listen to anyone beyond your own gut. If your gut is yelling one thing. So I became an illustrator. I represented myself, um, started out doing food for good housekeeping and then I broke into record album covers when, back when there were album covers. And I actually had a Grammy nomination for art, the music of Eric Satie on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Um, you got a poster this big when you bought the album. And it was the same year as Sticky Fingers and with, with Andy Warhol doing the zipper. Um, but it was Eric Satie's head in black and silver. And then uh, I probably could show you a picture of it before I run out. Um, so that, and then I taught myself to paint, you know, and when I was an illustrator, people went, well, why aren't you a painter? And when I became a painter, what happened to your illustrations? Yeah. <laughs> because my paintings, when I began, I didn't know about a tiny brush and I had gone from a zero, double zero or pitograph to a big latent brush, so they were powerful and strong. And people would literally run out of my house. So just keep going, just keep going. And you do make your own clothes. Oh yes, I, I, <laughs> my grandmother taught me how to crochet. <laughs> so I, that's another business. I invented several businesses. I was a single mother for 20 years. And um, so I invented a business selling reproductions of my art including on t-shirts, which are still viable. Um, and what else, what else, t-shirts. And 
reproductions of my work from frameable cards to I sold one of this as a three foot, the guy's holding it like this. Um, but this will go back in the closet. Yeah, I, that's actually not uncommon. Um, mm -hmm. Just so you know, can tell a lot of contemporary artists that have a need for space. So um, I always say, like they, they, you know, they, especially this, which is a really big piece to put on this wall. Um, so it's nice that we were able to display it. But a lot of this work, when it's done, it just goes somewhere and it sits in the closet until it's on display again. Well, luckily, I have two giant bags that you've stored yes. with cardboard <laughs> in the middle, and my husband. My husband over there put, put, <laughs> hook some things on the back so that, can... so that it could be done in a semicircle. Oh. That was the first time it was mm -hmm. shown. Um, so there's plenty of ways to hang it. So, um, so you know, I just wanted to, you know, because we're about wrap, wrapping up. How much time? You've got maybe ten, ten minutes. a couple minutes. I'm just going to get to say a couple things to you guys because you guys are going to be graduating and you're going to be figuring out what you're going to do and. How are you gonna do it? And this is my this is my final lecture I give to all my students every year because I work in the Department of Art and I have so many art students every year whose parents will say to them, "What are you gonna do with that?" You know, and I'm like, "Well, what are you gonna do with it?" That's the that's what you have to say back. But the point is, is that, and I think you really speak to this. You know, I was put in classes and I wasn't gonna go into art because they thought I would. You know, back then they really kind of decided where you'd be based on academic performance. There was no choices you guys had a lot more choices than previous generations did and then maybe even parents who are a little more you know they're more interested in you being happy than you know living their life of you know you know just going to a job every day and grinding out a paycheck right so but i have to say you know when i was in school all anybody